Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Journeys episode 42, Sword and Shield 1, The Slumbering Wield. This was the 1127th episode of the Pokemon anime and the first of the four-part Darkest Day story arc, or as the anime is referring to it, the Sword and Shield arc. There's so much to get into today, so I don't want to waste too much time at the start here. I do want to quickly point out a video that I dropped last week about scary Pokedex entries. I think it's one of my best videos ever in terms of quality, so check it out if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. The episode starts out with Rose and Oleana checking out what looks like the energy plant beneath Hammerlock Stadium. One of my criticisms of the Sword and Shield games is that Rose's story wasn't exactly fleshed out, and we never actually saw key events such as this one, where his research into finding unlimited power for Galar led to Dynamax energy bursting out from the energy plant. If you haven't played Sword and Shield, you may be a little unfamiliar with what I'm talking about here, since all we know about Rose in the anime so far is that he's the Macro Cosmos chairman, that he has some kind of connection to Leon. I'm sure this will get explored more throughout the Darkest Day story arc, but for now, we just get to see Rose getting up to some kind of sinister behavior. Meanwhile, it's time for bed over at the Cerise Laboratory, but before Ash gets to sleep, his Dynamax band starts glowing. Strange. The next day, he and Go are asking questions about Dynamaxing, and by the way, check out Ren's triple monitor setup with the cute desktop background of him and Magnemite. <laughs> Anyways. Back to the task at hand, Ash and Go are informed about the string of Dynamax and Pokemon rampaging all around Galar, and their task was traveling to the region to discover the mystery of Dynamax. Little did they know what they're about to get themselves into. Cut to Ash and Go on a train in Galar, and we learn that Professor Cerise told them to meet up with Professor Magnolia in order to learn more about Dynamax. Before they can get to their destination, the train stops because of a heavy fog up ahead, and the boys get dragged into a forest chasing after a bunnelby. This isn't just any forest though, they're running headfirst into the slumbering wield, as well as a date with destiny. Inside the forest, Go manages to catch the bunnelby he was after, but he gets separated from Ash along the way. That's a pretty convenient way to get our two heroes separated, because they're about to have some pretty incredible experiences on their own. What happens next is both my favorite and least favorite part of this entire episode, as we see Ash encounter Zacian and Go encounter Zamazenta. While these were both really cool scenes, the editing was kind of awkward with how we had to keep jumping back and forth between them, especially since they were exactly the same thing, happening twice. This was a strange way to recreate the opening to the Sword and Shield games, where the player and Hop encounter one of the legendaries in the foggy slumbering wield. If it were up to me, maybe I would have just had Ash and Go encounter both of them at the same time, and after they pass out from the heavy fog, they somehow wake up separated. I don't know, I'm probably just nitpicking here, and their separate encounters with these illusions will likely play into the story later, so I'll just wait and see how this ties into the rest of the story arc. Like I said though, it was really cool to see these legendary encounters, and it kind of reminded me of when Ash first saw Suicune in the forest when he was traveling to Johto. Go comes to first, and he's unable to find Ash, and he also misses their train. Fortunately for him, he sees some of the Dynamax energy in the sky, and Sonya shows up right at that moment. By the way, they really like this art style where their perspective is kind of far away from the characters, so they somehow get more cartoonish in their design. This happens a lot during this episode, and I'm not sure whether I like this or not, but again, I'm just talking about small details here. Ash and Pikachu are lost as well, and they also see the Dynamax energy in the sky, and presumably, they decide to follow where it's heading. Cut to a nearby town where a friendly Scorch gets hit by some of the Dynamax energy, causing it to Gigantamax. I don't know if this will ever get explained fully in the anime, but in the games, only certain Pokemon of a given species have the Gigantamax factor and not every Pokemon is capable of Gigantamaxing. So far in the anime, if a Pokemon species is able to Gigantamax, then it has. I guess this is just a more simple way to do things rather than complicate everything by having to explain what the Gigantamax factor is and why only certain Pokemon have it. Anyways, Scorch has totally lost control and is destroying the town by using what I think is just Max Flare, and sure enough, Ash shows up to save the day. Or at least, he tries to. 
Amidst all the chaos, we get a quick cutaway to Rose and Oleana once again, and the chairman gets an update on the rampaging Pokemon, to which he simply states that this is for Galar's future, and that a few casualties are inevitable. You know, in case you weren't sure whether Rose was a bad guy or not yet, this definitely proved it. Again, just like in the games, we don't get Rose's full perspective about this issue yet, but we get the gist of it. He's doing something that he thinks is for the betterment of society, even though doing so is throwing society into chaos. I like a little complexity in my antagonist, and this is way more advanced than the cliche, let's take over the world kind of bad guys. Back to the action, and Ash tries to talk some sense into Sentascorch, and it doesn't work. I mean, this was almost as reckless as the one time he tried to stop Dialga and Garatina from fighting. I'm not sure why he thought this was a good idea. Ash realizes that the time for talking is over, and he sends out Pikachu and Riolu to battle. Their attacks on their own aren't enough to do much damage, and just as Sent to Scorch is getting ready to fire off Max Flutterby, Dragonite enters the fray and we see an awesome triple combo attack scene. Honestly, one of the coolest battle moments of Pokemon Journey so far, but their attacks are only enough to negate the Max move. Dragonite swoops in to get everyone out of harm's way, and here's another example of what I was talking about earlier with the small character art design. It's especially strange in this one seeing Ash, Riolo, and Pikachu looking like this when Dragonite looks totally normal. Well, actually, Dragonite kind of looks way bigger than normal in this shot now that I think about it. Weird. Anyways, since Alola's champion wasn't able to take this thing down, in comes Galar's champion, Leon, to save the day. And surely Ash must have done some significant damage to Sent Scorch since it only took one Air Slash for Leon and Charizard to defeat it. Now that this proverbial, and literal, fire has been put out, Leon steps in to say that he was just doing what any champion would have done, and he's off to stop the rest of the rampaging Dynamax Pokemon. And, like any champion would do, Ash volunteers to go with him. Leon is hesitant at first, and agrees to let him come along when he sees the determination in his eyes. It is strange to see two regional champions interacting like this, especially since Ash is clearly not being treated as one, but that's okay, it's what we're used to seeing with Ash anyway, and his status as a Lola's champion is clearly not public knowledge either. That's a discussion for another day though. We check in with Go for the first time in a while, and he's riding shotgun with Sonya as they speed off somewhere. Go finally gets a hold of Ash on the phone, and the two are basically like, yeah, everything's pretty crazy right now. Go is headed to Turffield to do some Dynamax research based on the Legend of Galar, you know, the same kind of stuff Sonya got involved with during the games, and it looks like they're getting tailed by either Chairman Rose himself, or maybe one of his associates. And meanwhile, Ash and Leon are closing in on a Dynamax Pangaro as the episode comes to a close. I'm giving this episode an 8 out of 10 rating. For part 1 of this 4 part story arc, I really enjoyed this episode. We got cool moments like Zacian and Zamazenta's illusions appearing in the slumbering wield, Ash's battle against Sentascorch, and plenty of setup for the following three parts of this story. I've been critical in the past about how the Darkest Day story arc is happening too soon into Pokemon journeys for my liking, but through one episode, the execution of it has been fantastic. Ash's team not being fully developed yet actually makes it more understandable that he isn't able to defeat the rampaging Pokemon himself, along with the fact that he's just not used to battling Dynamax or Gigantamax Pokemon yet. These experiences will surely help him learn though, and will more than likely see his Dynamax band in action at some point during this story arc. This episode planted the seeds for what's to come in the next few episodes, and I think next week we'll get some more explanation and backstory about everything that's going on in Galar as we build towards the ultimate conclusion of the Darkest Day storyline. Speaking of the next episode, the preview didn't give us a whole lot to go off, but it looks like a dialogue heavy episode with Sonya and Go researching Galar's legend, Professor Magnolia finally making her appearance, and Rose interacting with Ash for the first time. This episode likely will not be the high point of the story arc, but it should be another important stepping stone towards the eventual climax in parts 3 and 4. What do you guys think will happen next week? I'm super curious to see what Rose has to say, but let me know what you all are looking forward to by leaving me a comment. I'm excited to hear what you guys think about all of this. Once again, make sure you check out my scary Pokedex video, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.